suspended from the quarterfinal, Onana, Kanabik, and Mbu. And they join seven others who played. Sadly, Rajamir has decided that we are not to see him. He has declined a place among the substitutes. But Akeke was a substitute that night in Naples, and he came on to score a goal which seemed to have ended England's World Cup hopes. Until, of course, Gary Lineker stepped forward to score two penalties. The referee from the Netherlands, who didn't have a representative in the World Cup, is John Blankenstein. Certainly a good atmosphere on a bitterly cold night. And it should perhaps be pointed out, as Graham Taylor said before the match, that England are expected to perform in temperatures close to 100. So, in a way, the boot is on the other foot this evening. That's Kunde, the man who scored from the penalty spot in Naples. Different goalkeeper this evening. Bell has taken over from Nkono. It's on by Fagal. Right. For right, for Lineker. That's a good block by Onana. Good ball out from the uh, England defence by Mark Wright. And Paul Gascoigne getting into the action. Bounds on the near edge of the six-yard area. Headed it down by Kunde. Collected well by Pierce. They're queuing up. It'll be a corner if it goes, and it does. Aguirre a little disappointed. Trevor Stephen. Test for Bell, which he's more than equal to. Plays his football in France with Bordeaux, who's thought to be the first choice in Italy but lost out to Nkodo. Mark White, you remember, ended that match, the quarter-final, with six stitches in a cut above the eyebrow. was ahead of Barnes. That's reminiscent of the World Cup. And Stuart Pearce, who, for me, has come on as a player since appearing in Italy. Pearce for the cross. And the header down was by Brian Robson. England for the 64th time and making a typical run not being picked up maybe a little disappointed he didn't get slightly more power in that the classic Brian Robson headed, headed it down and actually Bell did well to adjust because uh, it's a nasty ball for a goalkeeper to, to handle just skidding in front of you and it could easily have squirmed through his hand and Fede lost out to Trevor Stephen who was just blocked by Onana Not untypical. They were quite happy to put bodies in the way. As I said, Trevor, they were both the cabaret act and the bouncers, weren't they? Well, that was a, a typical piece of Cameroon defending, really. Uh, whenever a, a player sort of runs one against one and, and tries to take on a defender and they've actually wrong-footed and them going past them, they just block them off and uh, are quite happy to concede the free kick. As you can see, Trevor Stephen dispossession the defender and really he makes no effort to get out of his way once Trevor Stevens has touched it past him and quite happy to give away the free kick and uh, lengthy treatment. White is forward. Taken to it by uh, Pagal. Lineker, feel for handball. Referee says accidental by Omanbeek. He was the only one to see the danger. 
I don't think without him that uh, Lineker would have been offside. Because uh, Tato seemed to me to be at least level with him. Robson, Gascoigne, and here's White, watched it over his head, prepared to take his man on, and lost to him. So Keke, we've had the first ten minutes, they are fairly promising, second shot for handball, not given. Stephen. Lineker. Stephen. Had a good start, Trevor Stephen. Walker. Pierce. Barnes going out to the left ahead of him. Right is further forward. Onana has gone with him. Lineker in the middle might drive well it. Plenty of England players forward. Tato now is the marker for Barnes. Pierce. Gascoigne. Lovely turn. Inside out. Tato is still the marker. Pierce. This is good start from England. But there was a stumble at the start of that from Stuart Pierce, and it actually cost him everything because from that moment onwards he wasn't in control of the ball. There's uh, Paul Gascoigne doing one of his uh, famous turns, just toe-ending it then past the defender, deciding he's not going to really get a crossing. Turns back out and really waiting for Stuart Pierce to join. And then it broke down. White and Pierce a bit close to each other. And now got a foot there, good head by Stephen. Stephen again. And again, good try. Everything that he's done has been progressive so far. Always looking for the opening. And all reports, he's in very good form for Glasgow Rangers. At least was until he was out with a hamstring injury. Only came back at the weekend. But he's clearly sharp. And was a little unlucky. Didn't quite get the finish he was hoping for. Kunde. Akeke. Tato.
Little smile from Gary Lineker. England have the lead in the 21st minute. Good cross by uh, Trevor Stephen. Beautiful climb by Wright. Lineker took on the goalkeeper and the defender. The goalkeeper played him. The referee absolutely correct the point of the spot. And this is how it all finished. Pretty straight again. And Kona might have told him about that. But there's no question that uh, it was a penalty. Good play by Trevor Stephen out wide. And as you say, Ian Wright jumped and showed good spring to get a header. And really, Gar Gary Rineker got there first before Bell. And uh, Bell came in almost with a defensive tackle, caught his standing leg, and that put him off balance and put it into the side net. No question, a penalty. 1-0, and let's see if uh, the Cameroons get a little bit more adventurous. England, for the record, took the lead four minutes earlier than they did in Naples. 21st to 25th. Back again to Gascoigne, yes. And here's Wright. It's a corner. a good goalkeeper and on the penalty I wonder what would have happened had he stood still he went off first left and then right and the ball was almost exactly straight and Gary Lineker moving on to goal number 38 for England on his 62nd international appearance return by Ian Wright Boop. Hanabik. Akeke. A long way for Tato to run. Oh. Well, is that Paul Hardy or Blaze? He put his head in, played it perfectly legitimately. That's a difficult one again for Bell. And growing confidence of Ian Wright. go well, the goalkeeper looking for a cross had to come back quite a fair way and there is Roger Miller sitting with uh, Massing on his right Barnes certainly had a good look that time Gascoigne Missed the last match against the Republic of Ireland. Missed Saturday's game for Spurs. But has picked up the international temper. And who doubted it? Mark Wright making a late forward run. Pierce looking for pace to get past Tato and does well. Robson thought that was going to fall for his left. Dixon. Gascoigne. Lineker. The crowd won a penalty. The referee was well placed. And the intent then surely was to play the ball by the defender. a good tackle by the defender there and it just ricocheted off Gary Lineker pulled him down but uh, definitely got the ball first Stephen Barnes Stephen for whom this is cap number 30 there's Walker has had 27 consecutively Barnes did well to find that Referee has blown the whistle. And the tension is required.
Lozana Beer looks as if he might be going off there the stretch is coming on and if, and if you look at uh, his left knee he's had a scrapping round it all the game and I suspect that that has been aggravated in a, a sort of clumsy looking tackle which he appeared off ballast when he gave, gave the foul away and uh, it looks as if he's going to have to go off here as you see he comes in to make the tackle on John Barnes and this is standing foot just gets sucked underneath him his, his knee and I'm sure it's that strapped left knee that is causing the problem. Oh, that's certainly unfortunate for Cameroon. And the substitution is made. And Thomas Libby played all the 120 minutes against England. Pretty close to half time. Pierce. Dixon. Stephen. Wright moves away to the middle. Lineker uh, got a knock on the nose and couldn't get up enough for the nod down. Onana. Here's Onana and Mambiak. Seen very little of the ball forward, which has been the case of Cameroon throughout the half. They only had one shot, and that was way wide of the mark. David Seaman, a virtual spectator, and at the other end, Gary Lineker, scoring the one goal which divides the teams after he had been fouled by the goalkeeper, Bell. Half time, England one, Cameroon nil. reception for England as they came out for the second half and the crowd looking for some more goals from the home side I just wonder whether we can hope for Cameroon to be a little more adventurous or whether they will continue to play to keep the score down and retain respectability Dixon Wright intended as a pass to being the captain Brian Robson and that will be disappointing to the supporters of Ian Wright had rather more time then than he took and he'd be disappointed with that the Cameroon team unhappy that they were invited here in February it's a little difficult to understand why they didn't make the point a bit earlier and ask for an April date Maybe they could be thought of for a future Rouse Cup competition. Right, he was being pulled then by Anana, and the free kick has been given. No, it hasn't, but it should have. Stephen. That suggests that the pitch has hardened a little bit which is not surprising. Temperature must have dropped a couple of degrees. Roman Beek. And Fede. the odd moment of close skill but Cameroon players really not going forward with any great desire well, they've got plenty forward here they've got six up now seven that's a free kick against Tato his action was a little bad tempered Walker. is challenged from behind. Referee comes to have a word. And 
right. Bubbled a bit, but he kept control. Oman Beek. Again, it's slowed up. Tato. Poor cross. That's a one of nine players in the side play their football at home. And the uh, squad that is. Well, that will have hurt a bit. And the referee getting a bit cross, and I'm not surprised. He's getting a bit cross, but he's not getting uh, any less lenient than he has been because I think really that's three in a row, and uh, at some stage a yellow card will have to surface. Happened 13 times in the World Cup and two sendings off against Cameroon. And the man who passed the ball back there, Oman Beek, was the first player to score in the World Cup. First of 115 came in the tournament. Pierce and Pagan. Far by Pierce. Smile from Graham Taylor. But he must be disappointed that the uh, camera inside aren't coming out to play. Come on, Big. And it should be said that there are one or two in the crowd making noises which will very soon, when it becomes law, have them in considerable trouble. And not before time. A crowd incidentally of 61,075. Mbu. Libby gave it away. Lineker. Right is in the middle, but there are three to cover. And Tato. He put it away as right, waited in hope behind and applauded the cross. Good covering up by the Cameroon captain. Rather more of his style than we saw in attack a few moments ago. Corner kick being watched by the England goalkeeper standing in the centre circle. And it got a back leg. And Lineker and Wright went together, and Lineker is the scorer. It's his second. A goal in the 62nd minute. He had so many men over. Got a back flick from right, and it was the right foot of Lineker that found the touch. Maybe Ian Wright a little disappointed, because had it not done so, the Crystal Palace player would have scored. As it is, it's a second goal for Lineker. And a minor curiosity, the goal coming, as I said in the 61st minute, it was at that point in Naples that Cameroon drew level from the penalty spot. But this is a totally different match. And on this occasion, no more than Cameroon deserve. You know, they've been sitting back there, and that was really the perfect near-post corner. Mark Wright just getting up, clipping off the top of his head. He's so dangerous during the World Cup in those situations. Of course, uh, scored a vital goal as well, didn't he, against Egypt. And really, on, on that occasion now, given a, a second goal, and hopefully England can just relax that a little bit more, push one or two men forward and perhaps get a, a third and 
and really show Cameroon uh, what a disappointment they've been just coming here to defend. Tanto. Mambik. Palms just got a foot in. Pagal. Going nowhere fast there. Right. Cleanly won by Onana. And a sudden surge from the Africans. This is Mambik. And the corner conceded by Des Walker. moving into the six-yard area doesn't reach him yeah, having won a corner you thought they could have found a better one than that Libby Anana Pagal Dixon the far want more from England Stephen Lineker will certainly be looking for a hat-trick Well, certainly this is the most positive spell from the African team. Ended by Wright. Gascoigne. John Barnes, space behind if he wants to take him on, but he doesn't. At least not on the outside. Kunde. Dixon. Robson. Gascoigne. Not a good challenge by Mbu, who's been but a shadow of his Italian self. Which could be said of the entire team. And England wanting to make a substitution. Steve Hodge coming on to replace Paul Gascoigne, who a few moments ago seemed to be signaling for the bench that he needed to come off. Paul Gascoigne, of course, miss in uh, Spurs match on Saturday with a groin injury and looked to be just labouring a little bit in the second half, whether the sort of frosty surface has aggravated it, I don't know. But Stevie Hodge, good opportunity for him to play a central midfield role, which uh, is his best position, really. He plays that for Forrest. And the substitution, second one, is finally been made by England. Gary Pallister, last appeared in Saudi Arabia, replaces the captain... Brian Robson. And the captaincy reverts to Gary Lineker. Former skipper who's been pretty quiet. Not really his sort of match. Stephen. So 
So England now playing with Mark Wright at the back. Walker and Pallister in front, and they can expect the fullbacks to push forward even more. Here's Ian Wright. He's had a bit too much to do. There's half a gap there, but he's trying to come across the second man. And he's fairly comfortably robbed. It was a bit unlucky there, because uh, if it had taken it on, the defender would definitely have got in with the tackle, and he did run put him initially, but just lost his foot in just for a fraction of a second by the time then he got back on the ball, it was blocked. But uh, I think right now, with his twisting and turning, uh, you know, the conditions aren't ideal for him, but I think he's done enough tonight to put himself forward uh, as a strong contender for the game against the Republic. Uh, I think he's shown very well, run intelligently, and uh, linked up not bad with Gary Lineker, because there were certain doubts as to whether, you know, they could play together as a pair, but I, I think they've done quite well today. Top of the Geordie lads having a chat. Lineker, Hodge to his right, Stevie Hodge. Play on, says the referee. And Hodge will be very disappointed that he couldn't make that one count. Again, it was a good link-up between uh, Gary Lineker, Ian White, right, right playing it to Lineker, who flicked it to Hodge. And that's Barnes, and a good stop by Bell. Nice little attack. And Hodge, wanting to make sure of the first touch, he was challenged from the, the other side. Stephen, a good match. Dixon. Oh! Bell's reaction said everything about that. Got a back flick, and he's well held. Two more Pallister. And, uh, free kick has been given anyway. But the goalkeeper held it well under challenge. Mbu, Onana. Libby. Tato. Three on the edge of the area for Cameroon. Headed by Pallister. Barnes. The two Cameroon players left it. Right. Inside Anana. That's a good ball. Perhaps didn't curl as much forward as he might have wished. Dixon. Pierce. Taking on Pagal. Gets in the cross and wins a point. Pallister in the same position as last time, but it's on the deck. Barnes. Pierce. Dixon, as he was in the first half. Although well, that time he certainly was going for the shot. A little disappointed with the outcome. Yes, he hadn't made up his mind. That one was one that wouldn't come down quickly enough. Yes, good cross again from Pierce. Headed down and sat up quite nice to be fair. Just got underneath it. Uh, couldn't quite keep it in the angle. But uh, he's had a steady game, Lee Dixon. Really. Not the ideal match, to be fair, for Graham Taylor to come to any decisions, really, about seven weeks from now, the big match against the, the Republic. Uh, he's playing, of course, with a sweep now since Gary Pallister came on, but one of the options he's got to decide on is to whether to go into that game with a flat-back four as he started this evening or with the sweeper system. Five minutes left. England leading by two to nothing. Poco came here really as a possible replacement for the injured Makanaki.
but there has been no attack from Cameroon. Seaman has had 18 clean sheets this season for Arsenal. This has got to be one of the easiest ones, but keeping his concentration and that of his defenders in the closing moments. Out by Hodge. Kunde. What's happened? All of our three players are in the England half. And an O from the crowd. As he warms slightly the hands of Seaman. Pallister. Good record in the month of February. Five wins out of six matches played in this month. Only team to lower the flag for Holland. Nobody there. Two minutes. Stephen. Trevor Stephen, certainly one of the uh, pluses of the evening. Well, I think it's uh, an evening where Graham Taylor and England uh, have got to be satisfied. 2-0. Uh, um, not the greatest of, of games, but uh, Cameroon didn't come here with a positive attitude. They're quite happy now. In fact, um, amazingly enough to go off only having lost 2 nil and really I think Ian Wright uh, Trevor Stephen both have done well and both pushed for selection there in the Republic game uh, other than that of course Gary Lineker two more goals I think he quite enjoys playing Cameron Pierce. And he chooses the moment to produce the worst cross of the evening. I should think the feel of hot water is going to be very welcome for the players. Too long. Excellent hurdle by Gary Lineker. I think the cross was too deep for him. Can't think the referee would allow too much time for stoppages. But. Uh, Maybe Frank Dick will note this performance by Gary Lineker and Hurdling. <laughs> 2 nothing to England it is on 
had a bitterly cold night. Two more goals for Gary Lineker, as was the case on a warm night and a more important occasion in Naples. Takes his England total now to 39, puts him just 10 behind Bobby Charlton. 2 nothing. another victory for Graham Taylor's England. Graham, your verdict on the evening? Well, I mean, it was a comprehensive win for us, wasn't it? Uh, probably not all that easy because it would appear to me that uh, there was probably only one side playing to win. And that isn't always easy for the side that has to do that. And so, all in all, I'm pleased that we've got the international field back again. And it was a, com it was a comprehensive win, there's no doubt about that. Frankly, were you disappointed with Cameroon? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's difficult to actually make out exactly how they wanted to approach the game, but it looked as if they really had come, possibly, certainly not expecting to win. You're being very polite. I always am polite, aren't I? <laughs> were there any lessons there for England, then? Oh, there's lessons all of the time that we're looking, in as much that it sounds a strange thing to say to people, but you can sometimes have too much possession and not do... Uh, enough with it and it's certainly in the first half the amount of possession that we had and were allowed to have we didn't turn it into uh, working the opposition penalty box enough but at times it is difficult because basically I mean they just drop back into their own half of the field unless you move the ball that little bit quicker then it is difficult to open them up early on in the game they wasted a lot of time they knock it back to the goalkeeper and get very frustrating um, but they didn't really come out because they didn't have to because it wasn't a World Cup game they didn't have to come and, up and attack us I think they were just worried about getting a good hiding so they just was basically satisfied with with 2-0 which really um, spoiled the occasion somewhat the pitch played very well I was very surprised with it uh, no complaints there 88 caps the ambition is still there for the 100 yes well hopefully uh, you know I played well enough uh, tonight for the boss just to consider me again and the Irish next uh, next month I'm sure that will be a different type of game. They certainly won't play that way. Um, and I think we owe them one. 2 0, best we could hope for on a night like this. And Jimmy Hill, Terry Venables, you <laughs> clearly have a bit of sympathy for the players tonight. <laughs> you know, you feel such a fool without gloves, everyone's got them, haven't they? Yeah. It is the fashion tonight. We left the studio door open, I'm afraid. Infectious, aren't they, these fashions? <laughs> yeah. Now, normally, uh, There's the, always gloves, are, gloves, off. the There's gloves always. are off between you There's two, always. normally. Uh, Jimmy, conditions really uh, dictated the quality of that match tonight. Yes, the cold, but I must say that pitch was uh, exceptionally good in the circumstances. A, a pitch on which you could play football. Those that we see coming up might not be quite as good. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think anybody made a great reputation tonight, but I don't think anybody lost one either. So uh, a satisfactory result. We would have loved to have seen the Cameroons, as Graham Taylor said, um, have a go at England's goal, and then you get a proper game of football. 2-0, Terry. Let's take a look at the, uh, the key incidents that shaped that result. First of all, in the first half, the penalty incident with... Uh, Gary Lineker, fairly clear cut this. Yeah, the ball is played through to Trevor Stephen here, and uh, he collects it well, and he hits a, an excellent uh, far, far uh, cross to Barnes, who's very underrated, I think, in the air. Gary collects it well, and the goalkeeper lost his place, and he does well actually to get a shot in at all. Enormous jump from Barnes. He, he does well. I mean, you, when it, there it is, and with goalkeepers, it's a certain penalty. Gary still gets an effort in, and uh, <laughs> it, it's it's uh, it's undoubted penalty. Penalty kick here, Jimmy, straight at where the goalkeeper well, was. Very unusual one, um, banking on the fact that goalkeepers yeah. dive one way or the other, and he drilled that straight for the centre of the goal. Penalty taker's Perfect. got to be a bit of a gambler uh, there. Now, a few minutes later, uh, Gascoigne and Lineker linking up well. That's right, Dixon plays the ball, and Gaza, his vision is excellent here. First time ball, I thought it was possibly one of the best passes of the evening. Terrific. And again, Gary's in, and... Uh, the defender, in actual fact, gets it first, knocks it back onto Gary's leg, can't see it so well from that angle, and uh, although it is a penalty appeal, I, feel you, I think he, he, does get the, he does get the ball. Now, in the second half, uh, second goal for Gary. Yeah, two, in fact, and Robson comes in, three unmarked at the back post, and if you unmark uh, Gary in that position, he's going to punish you. Lovely little flick, and he sees it home. One of those rare chances where a bit of space opened up. Uh, a few minutes after that, Steve Hodge, uh, uh, yeah. good move, another penalty Good claim. passing movement. When the professionals talk about first touch, it can be so important. Lovely little ball from Gary Lineker there, just flicked to the right. But you see Steve doesn't quite clear the ball away from himself and slows himself up, which gives the defender the time to come back and hustle him there. Mm. And that, that's why 
you know, sometimes it's a little bit boring with professionals. They keep going on about he's good at his first touch and whatever. It's the difference between a goal chance and not. It's half a yard, that's all, to stretch him out forward as against just having to hold there. I think that the important part is to, is to get it out of your feet enough yeah. without ne not letting it go onto the goalkeeper. It's, it's getting yeah. that happy medium to get it out of your feet so you're able to lift your head to see what's in front of you. Players we were, we were getting a first international look at really tonight. Ian Wright, what about uh, his performance tonight, Jimmy? We almost agree, but not quite on it. It's very difficult for a striker first time round, first international cap on a night like that. Um, he did reasonably well. He threatened to be dangerous at times and just didn't get the run of a ball on the byline to put over a dangerous cross. But, of course, the real problem for Graham Taylor is not whether he might become good in ten internationals, it's whether the important match coming up, he's ready to put in then. That's the question. From the international debut to international experience, what about Brian Robson tonight? I thought he did well again. I, I think uh, he played very well uh, for Manchester United on Sunday, and I think that's what really 